But let's kick off the show with Senator Rounds from South Dakota. Great to have you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to visit with you. Your reaction to what the president is saying and the fight to reopen. Two dozen states are now pushing to reopen. There's a pushback against that. There's fear that cases will spike higher. If you do that, what's your take? We have to do both. We have to keep our workers safe. We have to use some good old common sense, but we need to reopen our economy as well. We've got to be able to do both. In this country, we can make that happen. Uh, I'm convinced that uh, right now, if we have the proper equipment and testing, and we've got a ways to go on the testing, but if we've got the proper equipment, the proper testing, I think uh, if people use a little bit of common sense, keep that separation out there, uh, we can reopen this economy, uh, get things rolling again, and at the same time keep our employees safe. You know, sir, the Senate is back in action. The House is on recess still during a pandemic. Critics are saying firefighters, cops, cashiers, grocery store clerks, pharmacists, doctors, nurses, they're fighting to get this economy and the health of the country back on track. Why is the House still on recess? I mean, Nancy Pelosi is now, quote, saying, you know, the president should not be do doing, you know, his press conferences, uh, you know, talk, slamming the president on that. And they want to bring in Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks to testify. Your reaction to all of that? Well, first of all, I think uh, Dr. Fauci is going to be before the Senate. We'll provide a good and ample opportunity for both sides to ask good questions. But remember, in the House, uh, they've done everything they can to try to discredit the president and the administration. Uh, what they should remember is, is that when you go to impeach a president, you, you make an enemy. And when that happens, there's no way that he's going to help them uh, create more controversy. What the president is focused on is getting this economy going again. He's uh, opened up. He's told us in the Senate that he wants to do whatever he can to work with us. And the fact that Dr. Fauci is coming to the Senate would suggest that he thinks the Senate will treat them fairly, ask good, hard, but fair questions. And uh, the House is going to have to learn the hard way that, that this is a case of a pandemic in which it takes all of the country to win. We've got to be pulling together on this. And right now, I suspect the president doesn't think that the House is necessarily pulling in the same direction as the rest of the country is. You know, Senator, uh, let's show the timeline of what uh, the reaction was from the Trump administration to the COVID-19 outbreak. If we can show the viewer what really happened, because there's a pushback saying, why didn't the president get testing done faster? Why didn't he react faster? Uh, you know, it should be noted that China did not release a genome sequence of this virus until late in the outbreak and also has yet to release the virus samples so doctors and researchers and medical experts can, you know, build drug therapies and vaccines off of it. Your take on now the big pushback against the president and the Trump administration saying you were too slow off the mark, you gave false comfort, you did top spin, false security for the American people. You shouldn't have done that. Your reaction to this? I think the president has suggested very strongly, and I agree with the president, that China should bear the blame. In this country, there is always an opportunity for us to say, in hindsight, we think we could do better. And that's a good goal, but you have to play with the cards that are dealt to you. When China did not release, uh, when they knew that this was a problem, when they didn't release that information, it put the entire world behind uh, the eight ball. And that's exactly what's happened here. When China did not come clean with what was going on, if they, since they did not uh, share with the rest of the world that there was a serious pandemic going on, and when they didn't tell us exactly what was popping, that put everybody behind the eight ball. And, and so, and in our country, we had the same problem the rest of the world did. Uh, the president has worked very, very hard to bring everything together. His team has been open to the suggestions that we've done. And whenever we've seen something that could be improved upon, they've taken our recommendations and they've acted on them. I can think of a number of things where we've made requests, such as opening up FEMA, and they immediately opened uh, up FEMA and used the, the logistics that were already in place there. They did it immediately upon our request. Uh, I went back in and I've talked to him about literally what's happening in the food market right now and the food processing. And uh, we asked for emergency orders under the Defense Production Act, and within two days, the Defense Production Act was activated, and we had assistance for those some of those meat uh, packing plants that were shut down and needed help in reopening. But he has been very responsive to our request for additional assistance. And uh, you know, I mean, that, that's what you want in an administration. You want to be able to have that good line of communication. Yeah. You know, 
What's happening now is there's a fear of bankruptcies are going to be on the rise. We've got J. Crew filing. Neiman Marcus is in trouble. J.C. Penney has been in trouble. Uh, we've got international travel may not cap come back till 2021. That's what the Treasury Secretary says. Uh, we've got the U.S. government borrowing this fiscal year four and a half trillion, maybe five trillion dollars. Um, you know, we have the House still in recess during a pandemic. It's worth repeating again. The Small Business Paycheck Protection Program is running out of money. California took a big chunk of that. Talk to us about Wendy's running out of beef for burgers. There's a meat shortage happening right now. Can you talk about that? Sure. We've, uh, we actually went to the president and advised him that our beef processors were telling us that uh, they were in the middle of a real problem here in their production capabilities. Uh, I, I sent a letter to the president and, and asked him to open up the Defense Production Act. And the reason for it was because our, our pork processors were sharing with us and our market folks were telling us that by the end of last week, they expected 45 percent of our pork production to be shut down. They expected that 25 percent of, of our beef production facilities, their capacity, would be shut down as well. And that's exactly what's going on. We've got some in storage and we've got plenty of livestock. The challenge is, is right now we have a bottleneck at the processing and we needed to get those, those uh, uh, facilities up and operating, but they had to be operated safely, which meant that we needed to have the Defense Production Act put into play so that they could get the emergency equipment they, they needed to keep their employees safe. Nobody wants them to operate without having a good, safe work environment, but we have to have our food back in production again. And yeah. the president responded literally yeah, within, the, within 48 the, hours. Understood. You know, the Democrats face the trial bar, the trial lobby. Uh, you know, there's a, a need for some kind of liability protection for businesses to reopen. Senator Mitch McConnell has been talking about that. Democrats Pelosi and Schumer pushing back against it. They do want safe working environments uh, for workers. That's the big fight that is still now underway. I want to get to the optimism. It's not just remdesivir. Gilead's remdesivir looks like a promising drug. Also, it's also Japan's Fuji film unit is uh, pushing through. Look at this. It's drug favirpiravir to over 40 countries uh, to for a COVID-19 trial. Roche, Roche is working with an arthritis drug, it's anti-inflammatory uh, treatment called Actemra uh, to stop the cytokine <laughs> storms. Uh, and also we hear out of the Netherlands, they have a monoclonal antibody that destroys the virus. So we've got, you know, about a thousand drug trials, pushes on vaccines happening. There's optimism. There's hope here. Your reaction to this story? Absolutely. There is optimism out there. First, with regard to rendezivir, there is a possibility of having that uh, 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 working as a, as a therapeutic in the very near future. Uh, but along with that, the vaccines that are being developed as we speak, uh, we've put additional money into the CARES Act in which we have actually funded a process where rather than having the pharmaceutical companies putting up the money uh, for, the, for the manufacturer of large doses, uh, we said, look, let us put up the money for the large doses of the best uh, prospects out there so that if they do prove to be uh, effective and safe, that we'll already have a supply of those vaccines ready to go. That is in the works right now. And so we're looking ahead. Uh, we're optimistic that we're going to get something successful with regard to vaccines. And that really means that people will understand that even if they get this virus or even if they're, they're, they're uh, uh, brought, if brought into contact with it, that with the appropriate vaccines, they won't necessarily get it. And if they do get it, that it will not be as severe as it would have been otherwise. And we can turn this into something similar to what we have with a flu epidemic rather than something as severe as, as COVID-19 has been to our elderly. Senator Rounds, thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you, sir. Come back Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity.